Introduction to, Isotopes and Isobars On August 6, 1945, a ten-foot-long bomb fell from the sky over the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Less than a minute later, everything within a mile of the bomb's detonation was obliterated. A massive firestorm rapidly destroyed miles more, killing tens of thousands of people. This was the first ever use of an atomic bomb in warfare, and it was done by using a famous element called uranium. This radioactive metal is unique in that one of its isotopes, uranium-235, is the only naturally occurring isotope capable of sustaining a nuclear fission reaction. To understand uranium, it's important to understand isotopes. A family of people often consists of related but not identical individuals. Likewise, elements have families known as isotopes and isobars. Let's find out more about these. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to, define isotopes with examples, and, define isobars with examples. Isotopes. An atom is composed of an incredibly dense core called a nucleus, consisting of protons and neutrons, surrounded by a cloud of electrons revolving around them in their orbits. You can think of protons and neutrons as the same kind of particle with one key difference that is, protons are positively charged, while neutrons carry no charge. Whereas electrons are negatively charged. An atom is identified and labeled according to the number of protons in its nucleus. This atomic number is ordinarily given the symbol Z. The sum of the number of protons, and the number of neutrons represents the mass number. It is represented by the letter A. Also, the number of protons in a nucleus determines the element's atomic number on the periodic table. The great importance of the atomic number derives from the observation that all atoms with the same atomic number have nearly, if not precisely, identical chemical properties. Not all the atoms of an element need to have the same number of neutrons in their nuclei. In fact, it is precisely the variation in the number of neutrons in the nuclei of atoms that give rise to isotopes. Take carbon for example, carbon has six protons, and is atomic number 6. Carbon occurs naturally in three forms, carbon 12, which has 6 neutrons plus 6 protons equals 12, carbon 13, which has 7 neutrons, and, carbon 14, which has 8 neutrons. These three share the place in the periodic table assigned to atomic number 6, and hence are called isotopes from the Greek isos, meaning same, and topos, signifying place of carbon. This means that all three isotopes have different atomic masses, carbon-14 being the heaviest, but share the same atomic number, Z equals 6. Well, you got an idea of what isotopes are now. Yes, in simple words isotopes can be defined as the atoms of the same element, having the same atomic number but different mass numbers. In nature, a number of atoms of some elements have been identified, which have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. For example, take the case of a hydrogen atom. It has three atomic species, namely protium, deuterium, and tritium. The atomic number of each one is 1, but the mass number is 1, 2 and 3, respectively. Now a question may arise. Do all elements contain isotopes? To put it as short as possible, yes. All elements, have some isotopes. Hydrogen only has three, which is by far the smallest number out there. Cesium and xenon each take the crown for the most naturally occurring isotopes, as they each have 36 isotopes that have been observed. Obviously, the question arises now that, what should we take as the mass of these isotopes? Let us find out. Well, we can represent it by taking the average mass of all the isotopic forms of an atom of that element. We have to know the percentage of each isotopic form, and then the average mass is calculated. For example, the average atomic mass of a chlorine atom, on the basis of the data, will be 35.5 U. It means that if you take a certain amount of chlorine, it will contain both isotopes of chlorine, 
and the average mass is 35.5 U. Now, we'll see some of the uses of these isotopes. An isotope of cobalt is used in the treatment of cancer. An isotope of iodine is used in the treatment of goiter. Iodine-131 can also be used in thyroid disease treatment. A heart pacemaker that contains plutonium-238 can be used to regulate the patient's heartbeats with heart problems. An isotope of uranium is used as a fuel in nuclear reactors. Carbon-14 is used to determine the date of fossils and historical materials. Well, that's all about the isotopes. Now let's take a look at isobars. We learned about the isotopes having the same atomic number, but a different mass number. Now, what if I tell you that the atoms of two different elements can have the same atomic mass? Whereas the atomic mass of an element is approximately equal to the mass number. Yes, let's understand with some examples, argon, potassium, calcium. If you notice the atomic number, it is different but the mass number is the same, that is 40. Hence, these elements are called isobars. Guess, you got an idea of what are isobars. Atoms of different elements with different atomic numbers, which have the same mass number, are known as isobars. The number of protons and neutrons alone will vary but the number of nucleons, or the sum of protons and neutrons in isobars will always be the same. Isobars always have different atomic structures, because of the difference in atomic numbers. The number of neutrons makes up the difference in the number of nucleons. Therefore, they are always different chemical elements, having the same atomic masses. Thus, isobar has different chemical properties. Some of applications of isobars, nuclear reactors can use uranium's isobars. An isobar of phosphorus is used to treat blood cancer. For cancer treatment, isobars of cobalt can be used. Isobars are used to treat tumors, blood clots etc. Conclusion? Thus, we can conclude that, the atoms of the same element, having the same atomic number but different mass numbers are called isotopes. The atoms of different elements with different atomic numbers, which have the same mass number, are known as isobars. Summary The atoms of the same element, having the same atomic number, but different mass numbers are called isotopes. We can represent it by taking the average mass of all the isotopic forms of an atom of that element. Isotopes are used in treatments of cancer, goiter, thyroid disease, heart problems etc. Atoms of different elements with different atomic numbers, which have the same mass number, are known as isobars. Isobars are used to treat tumors, blood cancer, blood clots etc.